let's try the simulation of the ligand that we were playing with last last session. Uh, I already have I already shared this file with you in in the Google Drive folder. So if you go here, you will see that. Here's the PDB file I, I named LC1 clean. So please open this one in Chimera and let's let's go through the workflow of microdynamics. And let's try to connect all these ideas with what the software is giving us uh, in, in each step. So now let's go to, let's open Chimera. If it's the first time that you open Chimera, I don't think you will see this blue color with all these different options. You will probably see just a black screen. Uh, if that's the case, don't worry. I mean, it's just because it's the first time you open it, but you will still be able to open your file. So in my case, I already have the file uh, with a shortcut. So I can just cl uh, click on this, but you have to find the file in your directory. So here's the ligand. And I'm going to wait for you guys to, to uh, download the file and open it on camera. And please po uh, post in the chat if you are like, if you got lost or you want me to repeat any step. I see, okay, with Eduardo. Okay, just uh, let me know if uh, through the poll if someone hasn't loaded the file. Jesus, uh, just a quick question. Uh, yeah. Carlos was asking if we have decided a time for tomorrow. So I think maybe we can do a poll just to. Yeah, we can do a poll uh, at the, at the end, before yeah, we yeah. leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have still a few people that they haven't loaded. Done, done, okay. Let's wait uh, one more minute or two. Meantime, I, I can send the, I can send you my paper on molecular dynamics. <laughs> uh, I published this with people in Oak Ridge. Yeah, so Gabriel is gonna share with us uh, how he used molecular dynamics. This is exciting. Well, this is a. Uh, um, uh, they were trying to study the uh, the effects of lipid membranes on 
how a carotenoid is inserted or what are the dynamics and, and how the, the lipids move because you have this lipid by layer and they are moving around and they want to see how if you insert a carotenoid there, how it behaves if it gets compact, if the lipids compact or are they extended. Anyway, that was fun. Okay, I see a lot of dons right now. So, I mean, if you haven't done so, just let me know. Uh, I can I can just stop or slow down. So now we have our ligand here loaded. So uh, as as you as you remember, we don't have or when we get a crystal structure, sometimes we lose where the hydrogens are. And this is our case, right? We don't, we don't have the hydrogens here. So what we can do is go to tools. Let me see if you can start seeing this. You go to tools and you go to MD ensemble analysis and you pick the option molecular dynamic simulation. And you will get this new window. So here is um, essentially, if you want to connect it, what we discussed, preparation, prep structure, this tab, and solvation and constraints, all these three tabs are related to the first step that we call system preparation. So, and then wrong parameters, that will be the one related to dynamics. The first thing that we, can, we should do is make sure that we have or system with hydrogens, and we're gonna pick uh, the force field. Here, for example, uh, after you click on start doc preparation, essentially you're gonna have um, the option to add hydrogens to your PDB file. Here are different methods to consider how you're gonna add those hydrogens. It mentions histidine or other particular amino acids because as you remember, some amino acids can have two uh, different states with two different charges. So, I mean, it can be single protonated or double protonated. And that will essentially vary or change uh, the number of hydrogens that we add. So we have to make sure that um, we are picking the right, uh, the right uh, number of protons or number of hydrogens that we add to our system. But here, since it's a ligand, we don't have to worry too much about it. So you can just click OK. And then you will see that you already have your hydrogens. And if you remember right now, here is the concept of force field. Here it's giving you a one force field of amber called FF14SB. There are other force fields of amber. And the reason there are many is because, as you might imagine, they are they were really good for one particular situation but not for another one or some of them were old versions uh we have to go to to the to the articles to the websites and see what's the difference between all these force fields here we're going to use the default uh amber ff14 sb and if you remember in the force field it's important to know or have a description of the charges if you remember in docking, we use the concept of gas tiger, but we have other ways to, to include charges. So here, AN1 BCC, this is another method. Um, uh, we, we, we don't have to mention too much details about this, but it's, in principle, it's better than gas tiger. So uh, if you want, you can just click on this just to have just to, to see what's the charge of each atom. So we're gonna do this just for, for the purpose of, of visualization. And here it's gonna detect our residue. We can specify if the charge of a our, of our residue of a ligand is different to zero, uh, but in our case it's neutral. Same, uh, same charge method. And here you can see uh, that it's gonna give you the charge or the yeah, what's gonna be the charge or the relative charge of each atom. Of each atom. So as you might imagine, um, 
there will be positive with negative. If we sum up all these charges, they're gonna, there should be, they should sum up to zero. And this gives us a, an explanation or an idea of how polarized each particular bond is. If you have a, a really, a very positive uh, partial charge, this is the concept of partial charges. If one partial charge is very positive, we might expect to have a partial charge relatively, uh, relatively uh, with a ne negative value relatively high. So here we can see that these sections here, as we would expect, carbon hydrogen bonds, they are not that polar, but for if we store these other uh, portions here, we can see that the charges are, are a little bit higher or with higher values. So then um, we already have, we already implemented the force field charges. Now let's go to solvation. If we want to run a simulation in gas phase, we don't have to do this step, but of course we want to capture what's happening in, in a real system and we need to add solvent. You remember here's the Pareto boundary conditions. We want this because we want to make sure that if our solvent leaves the box, it starts again or it enters a, a new one, a new copy. Here we can specify the box size. It's better for this software to pick automatic box size. So just to detect the size uh, automatically instead of defining it. Because sometimes if we define it, if we define it, uh, we might lose or we might cut some uh, some portions of our ligand is going to be outside. So let's let's click on automatic box size and click on start survey tool. If someone uh, is is behind us, please let us know. So here is the option for salvation. And here is an important concept too also that we didn't cover uh, because this is very, uh, very particular, very technical. Same with uh, force fields, there are different ways to model water. So here are essentially, some of them, this is for example, for alcohol, uh, other types of solvents. But if you see tip 3P, 3P, uh, TIP4 and so on, those are water models. And essentially they parameterize these models based on experiments. Uh, so you are able to represent or reproduce the density of water. Some of, uh, depending on your simulation, you have to check uh, when you're running a simulation, you have to check how they parameterize these models. So you, so you have this guarantee that you're picking something that is proper for your simulation. In this case, the most common one or one of the most, the most popular ones is this TIP3. TIP3P is one of the most popular ones. So let's use that one. As you might imagine, um, the reason it's called TIP3P, just as a random fact, is because it considers water as three particles, as, as, you, as you have hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. But other, other types of models, for example, TIP4, it has like a fake atom in the middle of that particular uh, water shape just to keep a particular bond rigid or not. But th those are very technical things of the model. Um, and you can read more about it when you are interested in, in using those models. As you might imagine, uh, it's also, it, it will also dictate how expensive it is to calculate the energies because you will have more parameters or less depending on the model. Let's stick to TIP 3P and let's just press OK. Uh, box size, let's pick something, something small, like let's, let's see five or three, let's, let's, let's do it small, three, OK. So then just wait for a couple of minutes and now, well, a couple of seconds, now we see these triangular shapes are the solvent. Of course, if we make our solvent or box bigger, we're gonna see more water molecules. So now we have our water, water box, and then comes the ions, the ionization step. We click on ions. Here is where we pick which ion to add. Typically we add um, sodium for positives and chloride for negatives. 
because typically we have in in an assistant we have solvent chloride dissolved but maybe in our simulation we want to have metals we want to have something else we can pick that option here as you might imagine this ligand is neutral so if we pick neutralize nothing's going to change let's do that Now we have our box prepared. We don't have ions in this case because our system doesn't require to have ions to neutralize. Maybe for concentration, if you want to change the concentration, we might we want to add some sodium and uh, sodium chloride, um, sodium and chloride ions. But for our case, let's make this simpler. Let's make this simple, at least for, for this example. Then let's go to constraints. The idea of constraints is it's very simple. Sometimes you want to keep one portion of your molecule rigid and uh, just to save some simulation time or for the preparation for the equilibration you don't need that that portion to move that's where you pick if you want to constrain or not since this is typically what we constrain are the water uh the water uh, molecules not that they won't move it's just that they will be i mean sometimes we don't want them to move sometimes yes for example if they're on the active side or not but for example, what we typically constrain in simulations, we don't have that option here to play with. But we typically constrain the, for example, in water, the oxygen hydrogen distance. So essentially, we're not allowing the water to do movements between oxygen and hydrogen. It's like imagine you have a string that is fixed, and you can imagine that would help you to save uh, to save uh, uh, computational time. But I mean, in order to pick constraints, you have to analyze what essentially you're going to model and if you can afford constraining or not uh, some one 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 uh, distance let's, let's not apply any constraint for our case and let's go to the run parameters and here in settings we see the three steps that we cover minimization equilibration and production minimization we typically start first defining what we want for minimization here are the steps this is an algorithm it's called steep in descent um it's just an algorithm to to minimize the the the, the energy you might imagine that there are other algorithms but this is one of the most popular ones let's just keep let's just keep this algorithm and 100 steps with just a, 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 a an example we don't have to go into very details and into many details here now equilibration how many steps you want equilibration and if you see here we have temperature control here we're gonna heat our system and here's where we can define which temperature we want how fast we want that heating process um if we start from step one step three at what step we want to start heating Pressure or something related to butter stat, we will deal that later. We will deal with that later. And here, time step. Essentially, how long we're going to equilibrate is going to depend on the time step that we pick and the number of steps. So if our time step is one femtosecond and we run for 5,000 5, steps, of course, we're going to run our simulation for 5,000 picoseconds. If we increase this time step to two, then we're going to run for a longer simulation time. Let's just skip one. And this is just for saving your files. Uh, for now, let's keep the desktop one. Just let me let me make sure that I don't have that uh, on my on my computer because it has some issues if you already have a file name that way. I'm just removed if I have any other file with that extension. I didn't do anything uh, different or, or that you, you have to do. I'm doing this because I, I may I ran, ran some tests and I might have some old files there. And I don't want those because you're gonna change, you're gonna cause me some problems. If you're running this, if you're doing this for the first time, you don't have to worry about this. Then let's go to the description of production. Let me know on the chat if you have uh, questions or you uh, are not are a bit behind. Here is the production. 
same same concept and then you're going to have steps you can define the time step that you're going to use for the integration part the, the thing that we described before which pressure we want if we also want to keep the same temperature since the production run is a continuation of an equilibration we have to make sure that we're giving the proper file to restart that simulation and then where do we want our output files let's keep the default one for now and that's pretty much what we can do here as you as you can see it doesn't give it it doesn't give chimera doesn't give you many flexibilities or many different things to move but it's it has the necessary to get familiar with the concepts and run our first molecular dynamic simulations. So now that we have set up everything, let's just click on run. And just to make things more fun, if we go to other runtimes or other runtime options, let's let's check the light trajectory option. If you want more CPUs, if your computer has more CPUs, let's you can click on that option. Let's say I want two CPUs. And let's run. And you can see here that the molecules start to move. It's running the simulation. Um, this might take a couple of seconds your computer. Um, let's just wait for a minute for everyone to, to allow the simulation to stop. When it finishes or when it, when the simulation is complete, you will see this new window. And here, for example, the molecule looks a little bit weird. It's because we cross the boundary the boundaries of our box. So here, for example, is almost at the border of our simulation of our box. But as I mentioned, if you're essentially leaving a box in one side it's going to appear on the other side. So don't worry too much about this weird shape. Uh, it's, it's part of the periodic boundary conditions uh, process. Later on, there are ways to adjust the coordinates in, uh, in such a way that you don't see this. But this is not, I mean, for, for, for these purposes, we don't have to worry too much at, at this point. So yeah, um, here's the movie. Essentially, you can see here how the molecule moves, changes a little bit, the bond uh, length, some angles are a little bit distorted, water moves a little bit around. And that will be exactly the same process or exactly the same thing that you will see with a protein. Just that, of course, you will see the protein moving, your ligand moving, water and possible ions moving around the box. So I'm gonna pause this. Is the, is the molecule breaking or is this just the angle? It's just the angle. Okay. It shouldn't break. Uh, so, I mean, it's probably closing the break boundary condition. So that's why it's appearing here. Uh huh. If we run with a bigger box, we won't, most likely we won't see this. Oh, okay. The box is, was too small. There was only three Armstrongs far apart. Of, so it's really small. But yeah, as I mentioned, in molecular dynamic simulations, you shouldn't see bond breakings. You are not allowed to break a bond in typical molecular dynamic simulation. So if you see something weird, it's mostly related to just crossing the parade boundary conditions. If someone have any, any issue, just let me know. Yeah, I yes, I, I have an issue. It's... Yeah, I saw your message. That happened 
when you click run, right? Okay, so um, you haven't had any, 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 if you have any problem, just, just put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can, you can just continue seeing this uh, just to, to, to have the explanation. But uh, we, we might, we're going to help you if you have any issue with the simulation. So once you finish with this, let's go to the analysis just to check some general things. So for example, here the temperature. You will have this plot here. And we can see that the temperature is around 300. The reason here, it has a very uh, higher fluctuations is because here is a production run. And essentially here we're having some uh, pressure effects that we have, don't have here. But as long as we are around 300, it's fine. If we run this for a longer time, we will have a better average related to 300. So let's, let's not worry too much about it at this point. And then the other thing that I mentioned to you that is cool for analysis is the, R, is the RMSD. Let's click on the RMSD option. And let's plot. Here, for example, uh, since our system is crossing the correct boundary conditions, we're gonna see the RMSD to, to go at higher values. That doesn't mean that our simulation is wrong. It's just that the way where the final correct boundary conditions uh, are probably, you have to adjust your box to not having those particular jumps between one side or the other. If we increase the box size to 10 or five or 10, we will see values that are gonna get closer than here, which this is before we have this problem conditions crossing. So you will see that these values are gonna be relatively small. And that's, a, that, that's what we want. We want RMSD values of, of, uh, that, that are small. If we see things like here, like, like in our case, most, most likely are related to the product boundary condition uh, uh, effect. So if we repeat the simulation with a, like with a bigger box, most likely you won't see this. So try for the next, the next uh, uh, simulation. This is gonna be with your ligand. Just increase the box size instead of using three because it was a very small one that I used. Use five or six or seven and just check and for most likely the RMSD won't be uh, like this one. And yeah, that's it uh, for showing this particular molecular dynamic simulation. Now uh, we can just go, we have a couple of minutes for you guys to try your ligand and see if, if you find um, uh, any, any issue with this, just, just to, to solve it uh, right now. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna let you, let you guys work on, Gabriel, can you, sh can you share the ligand website? Sure. Let me give it a second. So Gabriel is gonna paste on the chat, the website where you can uh, look for ligands and you can download the PDB file. And you can do the exact same process as we did here. I just put it in the chat.
So here you can look for another ligand. If you go to browse, you can, for example, find your ligand you want, uh, popular drugs, whatever you want to simulate. Mm -hmm. And then it's gonna give you the option to, for example, you click on this one, you will be able to download the PDB file. Or also, if you remember from one of the videos, there are ways to import directly based on the ID. So you can also, if you're able to find the ID, you can also import the ligand directly. Hmm. So let's spend the, the few minutes that we have left on, on the ligand that you want to simulate. And whenever someone finish, uh, has the simulation complete, please share with us and let's see, let's see the, the trajectory. Feel free to start sharing screens and, and let's see what, what ligands you, you found. So while you're doing that, um, I just wanna share with you on Drive, there is this movie that I created for you. Just uh, You can do it this way better than what I did here. Uh, I, I provide you the files to, to essentially um, load a PyMO um, session and create a movie. So this is what I created with the files that I provided. I'm gonna paste in a, in a few minutes the link with the steps to uh, generate a movie in Pymo with the files that I, that I gave you. And feel free to start playing with what you already know of Pymo to make this particular movie extremely nice. As, as we saw in the, in the, in the art sec section or the, the Zoom calls, there are, there's plenty of room to apply the, the uh, artistic skills here. And that's what we want you guys to try and explore. Uh, now, that, now that we have this trajectory of the, the protein that you are use for docking, let's try to use that and combine it with the molecular dynamics concept and create a really nice movie.
I just sent the poll for the time uh, that works better for you. Just let us know and, and we can share in a minute. Yeah, once I, once I have all the all the answers, uh, I'm gonna share with you what works better for everyone or for most people, and and, and let's stick to that time. Okay, this is what we got from the poll. It seems that we need to run another one. Let me send in a bit. Oh, wait, I'm gonna send it again, sorry. Just don't pick the 9 a.m. and decide between 10 and 11. So there's a question here for the next two weekends. So the closing ceremony, this is where we're gonna share uh, what we work on, so the projects. And Gabriel is gonna comment on that in a bit, what we have in mind. And of course, we're always open to suggestions and whatever you, you find more, more interesting and, uh, and appealing. The symposium, that's a good question. I honestly don't know. <laughs> Really, you know? No, I have no idea. I'm assuming it will be like invited speakers because during the closing ceremony is where we are we're supposed to 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 share with the other the other clubs uh, the activities that we did during the past few days.
Okay, so I'm gonna share with you the poll. <laughs> and someone picked my IM. <laughs> So, okay, let's meet tomorrow at 10 a.m. 10 a.m., that's eight in the morning, okay. All right. Does anyone want to share if you have finished um, your MD simulation? And you can just comment on why you picked that ligand, what you find it cool, or, or you just like the name or something like that. Ron keeps loading. Okay. It seems like it's taking some time. It, it's it's okay. I mean, it, that's something expected since. Uh, I mean, molecular dynamic simulations requires a lot of computational time. So let's do this. When you get your, your simulation finished, uh, you can just share a screenshot on, on Slack and you can comment on why you picked that ligand, uh, if you find it appealing, if you want to explore docking with that one, which en enzyme, whatever you want to comment on. And in that way we can start um, getting more, we're getting to know each other through what ligand is, is great for us. And um, as to wrap up, since we are almost, well, we are past the time, but it's fine. I uh, just wanted to share with you the, the website uh, that I mentioned. This is a website to essentially turn MD trajectories into movies using PyMol. So here's where you can apply your skills of, of PyMol to create really nice movies, create, create uh, essentially combine the concept of microdynamics implicitly is docking because the structure that we are we use for MD was your doc structure, and we are combining this with uh, what what uh, what Carlos taught us before uh, for PyMod. So you only need three files: a PDB file, a .gro file. This extension comes from Gromax. This is the software that I use to run this simulation for a longer time. I, I can show you if you're interested uh, how I did this. And this is the trajectory file, the XTC. Once you load all these files, you will be able to get or, or to analyze the trajectory. And that's how you can start playing with the, with, with, with the, with the, 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 the dynamics. And just following this 
small steps, you can have a, a movie that I'm sure is going to be better than mine. You guys are more creative than me. And uh, having a really nice movie that you can later share with the, with the other club members. Or also with, with, the, other, with, the, other, uh, with the other participants, it would be great to share with them what we're doing. 